Hello, and welcome to the Irish Ace Theatre. Previously, I was talking about Peter and Elizabeth Latouche, the couple responsible for building Lugalore, a magical lodge tucked deep within the Wicklow Mountains. Lugalore is situated at the bottom of a valley reached after a steep descent. Its location helps to give the place its very special character and explains why the Latouches chose to build their retreat here. An interest in field sports would have provided Peter Latouche with an additional motive for acquiring Lugalore. In 1775, he was painted attired for a day's shooting by an Irish artist with the appropriate name Robert Hunter. But Lugalore's appeal for the couple would have been primarily aesthetic, and indeed one might almost say spiritual. It's worth remembering that in 1757, Edmund Burke, who was well known to the Latouches, had published his treatise, A Philosophical Inquiry into the Origin of Our Ideas of the Sublime and Beautiful a work which helped to define the Romantic movement's attitude towards nature. That attitude can be seen in this painting by the 18th century Irish artist George Barrett of the Wicklow landscape, similar to that at Lugalore. And that spot, set in a deep valley between two vertiginous mountains, clearly conformed to Romantic notions of what was the sublime. Indeed, almost immediately after the lodge was built here, It began to be painted by artists such as Cecilia Campbell, who found in the place all the necessary qualities to produce pictures that would thrill any viewer, especially when the scene can be seen bathed in moonlight. Visitors eagerly flocked to the site, led here by writers who enthused about its dramatic beauty. The author of an 1822 guide to Wicklow, for example, declared himself awestruck that the first view of Lugalore should be of a bold, awful, and sublime character. Fortunately, he recovered sufficiently to give a full account of the place. The Latouches soon found themselves inundated with requests to visit their little rustic retreat. They were remarkably tolerant and did allow other people to come onto the estate. As early as 1805, it was announced that A part of the building is allotted for respectable strangers where, in a spirit of Irish hospitality, beds and attendants are provided. It's extraordinary. That kind of generosity is just inconceivable today. Nevertheless, eventually, access did have to be limited to certain days of the week and to those who could demonstrate that, like the Latouches themselves, they were gentlefolk. But evidence of Lugalore's abiding popularity is demonstrated by a print produced in the 1830s, showing the estate's boatman, Charlie Carr. He acted as a guide for visitors and appears to have been a precursor of the modern-day hipster. In 1826, one author noted that Carr's face was covered in black whiskers of unusual magnitude, of which he seems vain, and suffers to meet in a sort of ruff that covers his throat and the underpart of his chin. Obviously, a large part of Lugalore's appeal was the house itself, perfectly located at the head of the valley and with views down to the shores of Loch Tay. Regrettably, we have no idea who was responsible for the building's distinct design, described by the late Knight of Glynn as being that special brand of 18th century Gothic that rejoices in little battlements, crotchets, trefoil and quatrefoil windows and OG mantelpieces. In fact, the Gothic of pastry cooks and Rockingham China Lugalore is the best extant example we have here in Ireland of a style that has come to be known as Strawberry Hill Gothic. Strawberry Hill in Twickenham outside London has been mentioned here before when we were discussing 18th century Gothic, that is Gothic spelt with a K at the end, and being a style which treated medieval architecture as a kind of treasure chest of decorative details to be raided at will. Thus it's possible to see that for all its Gothic trimmings, the trefoil windows and OG mantelpieces to which the knight referred, this is essentially a classical building in which the laws of symmetry remain all important. Notice how the entrance hall, where the wallpaper to be changed and one or two items of furniture removed, would have no appearance of the Gothic whatsoever. So the Latouches, and whoever might have been their architect, were being very up to the minute in choosing this particular style, but not being too serious or slavish about it. 
And that, after all, is part of the place's playful charm. In the next episode, I want to explain how Lugalore passed out of the Latouche's hands and who was its next owner. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.